Hi. I'm opening the doors. Come on in. Welcome. Nice to see you. I see myself, by the way, and I can see I'm getting a little shaggy. <laughs> Probably not important. Not important in the larger scheme of things. And that's an interesting sort of process I find myself going through over and over these days. Like a measure of what's important in the larger scheme of things. I mean, sort of in relation to there being a pandemic a world health emergency. I wonder what your, how, how, how your assessment of what's important is changing these days. And how's it going? Like we've been in this for a while and there's probably evolving feelings about it. I mean, the first week I was just terrified and filled with dread. And I have to say, usually I'm not these days, but I, I do have feelings of distraction and uh, restlessness. And there's another thing I want to talk about today that's what's often called survivor guilt. It's more like health guilt. Like, oh my gosh, I read about terrible things. I see terrible things going on and I'm okay. Do I get to feel my own feelings of anxiousness and restlessness, given that some people in the world are having a much harder time than me. Let's, let's do a little processing about that today. And I'm just noticing that some people are checking in. And David writes, I haven't shaved in the last two days and shave about every other day right now. Why bother? But I feel a loss of personal dignity. Yeah. I mean, I hear that some people are staying in their pajamas all day and I'm I'm not because I I'm appearing in public in a way uh, but how does how does how we live change how we feel about ourselves something to really get in touch with yeah yeah so good um, Elizabeth writes I've decided this is a totally new world we're two month old babies ah okay here's a nice perspective in other words giving ourselves some time to understand that it's okay to feel new at all of this, what it is we're learning, what it is we're doing together. I love the hellos that are coming in from so many people. Why don't we do a little process together right now that has to do oh, with, um, I just saw somebody I like. Uh, I, I, yes, Carol is writing, I feel guilty for being happy. Does anybody feel guilty for being happy? Does anybody feel feeling like some things are better? And how dare I feel that, you know? So let's do a little process together because I wanted to just have you take a, a little time to tune in to how you are right now. It's one of the gifts that I can offer to you. Is this a pause to tune in and sense? I, I've, been, I've been saying, a lot that my how we feel right now in this present moment is like a grounding it's like an anchor it's what helps us not be overwhelmed even if what you're feeling right now is something painful something difficult like strong anxiety it i think you'll find and let me show you that it helps to be present to it and to acknowledge it so let's take a moment and as I notice that I get a breath as soon as I say, let's take a moment. So maybe that happen, happens for you. And to be aware of your body. And what helps me be aware of my body is to find my feet. There's your feet. Very good. I wiggle my toes a little. I wiggle my butt a little. Really feeling my body here, here and now. The body has the gift of the present moment. We cannot feel our body tomorrow. We're, <laughs> we're feeling our body right now. And so your body in the support of what you're sitting on or standing on or lying on. And then also the 
inner sense of redness, like the inner sense of how you are, your throat, your chest, stomach and belly, like coming in to sense. So what if we say that however you're feeling right now is how you're feeling right now? So this is like, you can call it radical acceptance, but acceptance might be too, too big a word. It's simple presence. How I'm feeling is how I'm feeling. And I am here with that. And that might be terror. It might be overwhelm. It might be sadness, it might be an uneasy feeling. There's all kinds of possibilities. There's feelings that are hardly possible to put into words, but they're there. I, I am here with how I'm feeling right now. Notice what happens when you can be here with how you are feeling. There's a little extra thing in there. Not just, I feel this, but I am here with feeling this. I am present. It's not the same as getting distant or pushing it away. We can be fully feeling, and yet we're aware that we're fully feeling. Give that a try. See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And let us see if there's a possibility of being curious. So, so once you sense what's here, whatever it might be, is it possible to lean toward it with interested curiosity? And, and, and in other words, you don't already know all the reasons you feel this way. It's a little bit of a mind bender. You, you know there are lots of good reasons for feeling anxious or guilty or sad, but curiosity means I actually don't know all the reasons. It's like getting to know another person and saying, tell me more about yourself instead of, ah, I already know. <laughs> so we're not going to say to our own feelings, ah, I already know. We're going to say, huh, huh, right? Saying to your own feelings, huh, I'd like to get to know you better. Leaning toward with curiosity. Mm, yeah. And when you're tuning in, you discover more than was there before, which is good, which is good. There's nothing wrong with having more than one feeling, having more subtle feelings. Yeah, I was gonna share with you a bit today about this um, concern about other people and Jane is just writing, this is the very thing I'm talking about. Hello everyone from New York City. I am doing well, but I have a difficult time when I think of all those suffering terribly. So you have a feeling that comes when you think of those people suffering terribly and that feeling belongs to you, it's your feeling. You cannot feel their feelings for them much as you might like them to. But you, your job is to allow a safe place for your own feelings, which come naturally because we're human beings when we hear about and learn about the suffering of others. I am sensing something in me that is suffering as I hear about the suffering of others. And just if this is true for you, or change the words so they fit you better. But for example, I'm sensing something in me suffering, or I'm sensing something in me sorry, sad, or I'm sensing something in me guilty. Guilty is interesting. We'll come back to that. And I'm saying hello to that in me. So this is also a very grounding thing to do. Inside yourself, I'm saying hello in me to my feelings. 
and my feelings are my job. And if you're a, if you're a, a counselor, a psychotherapist, a friend, a family member, you can also be a listener, a, be present for the feelings of others. But even so, we want to have one hand on ourselves and one hand reaching toward the other person. And it's a little, it's nice we have two hands, most of us. So in order to give to another person, in order to give my company, my empathy, my presence, I always need to also be giving something to myself. Does that feel right? Great. Just going to take another peek at what people are saying. Somebody wrote, I don't feel anything. And to not feel anything is also a feeling. So take a moment to sense what nothing feels like. Does it feel like there's a barrier? Does it feel like a blankness? Does it feel like a snowstorm? Does it feel like I'm up here and the place where the feelings are, I don't wanna go there. So even not feeling anything is an experience you can get curious about. Welcoming, allowing, but not curious. Somebody wrote, I can welcome and allow, but being curious goes too far. Oh, good for you for noticing that. I love it. Yeah, being curious goes too far. All right, I hear that. And Noel is noticing his body is very tense. Okay. And that it has something to do with bad news and worry. So being with the tense in your body right now, saying, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you tense feeling. I sense how tense you are. And if you're like me and most of other people I know, this moment of turning toward ourselves is rare. And the more there's crisis going on, even, even when it's crisis we can't do anything about, our attention is out there and our bodies are reacting but we're forgetting to pause and just say, hello, I'm, I'm with you. Hello, I'm with you. That's why I do these half hour sessions so that uh, you can maybe take a little time to do that in your week and to do it a few times a day if possible, which is how am I right now? What's going on? Wouldn't it be great if, you know, once every hour, you pause and check, how am I now? Some people even set a timer or an alarm that's like a reminder to sense how I am. You feel what I'm talking about? That if, if my attention is out here, I'm watching the news, watching videos, reading the newspaper, and, and I've got images and stories coming into me, and it feels like there's so much I need a pause for myself in all of that. I need to say, okay, how am I right now? Wow, my stomach is clenched. Okay, stomach, I get how clenched you are. And then I might say to my stomach, what made you especially clenched? Because maybe I read the whole newspaper and maybe, or maybe I watched five things on Facebook. That's not me, I don't do Facebook, but somebody might. And I don't know which one of them especially brought the clenched. So I, I, I pause and I ask, was there something in the newspaper that especially brings the clenched? Because I read it all so quickly and oh, and then I get it, oh. It was the news that such and such a a state is allowing things to open and yeah, whatever, right? Whatever it was, let's find out. And then I say to the clenched, oh, it was especially that. And there's a little bit of easing there. Your, the outer circumstances don't cause your feelings. You don't have to feel Fill in the blank, tense, anxious, sad, etc. 
I mean, maybe you do, but it's not the outer circumstances that made you feel that way. It's the outer circumstance plus you, plus what, it, what those things mean to you, plus what they touch in you. And so what it can feel like, you have no control at all. <laughs> I know I feel that way sometimes. I have no control at all. Uh, I have little control. I can stay home instead of going to the grocery store, but that's so little compared to what's going on. But what is within our realm, right? What is within our power is this inner relationship with how we feel. I can start with that, let's say that part of me that's say, I have no control, I have no control, and say hello to that. And use the language, I'm sensing something in me has no control feels, has feelings about having no control. And take a moment to acknowledge that, let it know I hear it. I don't have to solve its problem. It doesn't really help to try to fix or solve. That's been my experience. On the feeling level, it doesn't really help. Let me just see what's in the chat lately. Oh, okay. People are sharing some of their feelings. You know, if you choose all panelists and attendees, more people will see your chat instead of just me. Yeah, thank you so much. Sometimes it feels like I'm living with earplugs in, sort of hearing myself most of the time and, and something wants to take them out and cannot. Yeah, so you're acknowledging something and you're feeling a bit panicky at the way you seem like you're just hearing yourself all the time. You know, the power of acknowledging is so wonderful. So Laura is asking, it doesn't really help to solve the problems. Ah, no, what I meant to say was, it doesn't help to try to fix your feelings. If you have problems that you can do things about, that's wonderful. And maybe you can find a source of masks by networking in your neighborhood. That's great, but it's our feeling states that we cannot fix by, let's say for example, this is what I don't recommend. Let's say I have a feeling of, I, I hate it that I feel so out of control. And something in me hates it that I feel so out of control. So I'm using my something in me language. I'm putting my hand there maybe. I'm saying, I really hear you. I hear how hard it is to not have any control. Now, here's what I don't recommend. But there's so much you do control. <laughs> do you see? That's what I mean by trying to fix the feeling, by, by counter the counter evidence. No, you don't have to feel that way because there's so blah, 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 blah. No, any sentence that starts, you don't have to feel that way is really not a good idea in my view <laughs> toward ourselves or toward other people in our lives. I'd recommend starting the sentence with, you feel that way and I hear you. And I think you'll find that your inner world is very grateful for being treated that way, for not having somebody tell it to feel differently, but to really have somebody say, I really hear you. And let's talk about um, guilt. Because I've, I've been hearing that and I've been feeling a bit of it myself, that, that odd, is it really okay to feel good, to feel like some things are better? And I, a lot of people wrote in the chat, yes, they do. So on the one hand, isn't that nice? I'm great. I am grateful that so many of you are okay and enjoying some things about your life right now. I'm home with my sweetie, who is a noted film historian, and we're having a film festival. Last night, we watched The Stranger by Orson Welles. It's a wonderful movie. I never saw it. So what's nice, right? What's great? What's even better than it was? I know the, the birds are enjoying themselves. Do we get to enjoy what's better? Is that allowed? So there may be a part that feels guilty. 
about enjoying some things about the present state of the world. The part that feels guilty as we think about the healthcare workers, the people in the grocery store. Like every time I do go to the grocery store, every time the people there who I know and like look more stressed and anxious to me than they did before. And that's right in my world. And then people who have the virus or who no, have family members who do, my heart is with them. This is such a hard thing. It's a little bit of the out of control thing, actually. Like my heart is with them, but that doesn't seem like it does very much for them. I can't really help. I can donate to food services that give food to first responders. I donated the extra sheets in my house to somebody who was making them into masks. But it feels so little compared to what's, what some are doing. So I get to be with those feelings of just was touching some emotion right now and I said it feels so little compared to what some are doing. Yes, but I think guilt is something, something in me. I don't have to, I, I can turn toward this feeling of guilt and, and get to know it better. And sometimes it turns out that that, those feelings of guilt rather than gratitude. Guilt alongside of gratitude. I'm never going to tell you not to feel that way. You know that. But I would say that you might turn toward guilt and get curious. If anybody's feeling that way, you might take a moment to do that right now. Something in me feels guilty, and I am going to say hello to that. And see if it's possible to be curious. And what it is that sparks or generates, evokes that feeling of guilt. And I'm saying hello to that. Sometimes there's, as we do this, we start to get the feel of something younger inside of us. There's a younger me who's feeling guilty. She always felt that her worth depended on taking care of others. That's just one possibility. Maybe there's something like that going on. Remember, we're never going to talk ourselves out of our feelings, but we are wanting to get to know them better and then say, I really hear you feel that way. Well, thank you to those of you who are sharing how you feel in the chat. Lindsay writes, something in me fears everything's going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And you would say hello to that something that fears that. And it really let it know you hear that's what it's fearing, that everything will get worse or worse. Dinah asks, do I recommend mantras like I don't have to try to control everything? If that works for you. Of course, go ahead. I have never found that such things work because, again, it's like I'm trying to talk myself out of things. So I'd rather do, for me, it works better to do the turning toward. I sense something in me that thinks it has to try to control everything, and I'm just saying hello to that. So what I'm doing is what we call unmerging or disidentifying. I discover there was something in me trying to control everything, for example, and rather than I don't have to control everything because that's like, kind of suppression, I just turn toward it. And the fact that I can turn towards something that thinks it has to try to control everything means I'm bigger than that. The very fact of turning toward it means I'm bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, John. John wrote, I enjoy the sense of all of us sharing this precious time. Happy to be sharing this with you. Yeah, yeah. Amy, is share, Amy shares that she's struggling with grief. I happen to know that Amy's grief 
it, it does not have to do with COVID-19, but about a beloved person she lost. And something in me feels guilty that I'm struggling with that. Yeah, just say hello to that. Ah, Dinah writes, I forgot to enjoy the, all the things I, in, I do enjoy. Yeah, yeah. There's a cloistered reflective time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and Susan writes about fearing that the next step will be scary again. We'll feel less safe. Somebody's going to try to start up the world too soon. Absolutely. That's something to be worried about. We say hello to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dinah writes, my worry and my enjoyment are not great roommates. <laughs> Well, that's why we have two hands. Remember I was saying how nice it is to have two hands? Something in me is worried. Something in me is enjoying. And I am big enough for both. I am big enough for both. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, Joyce writes, it would be great to read your book, Presence, Anne's book, Presence, but I had trouble ordering it. Well, we have a PDF ebook version. Now that this is the world of downloads, so, and, the, and that we were very careful to create, there's just as many pictures and things in the ebook version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Donna, how nice that you're here. Feeling joy raises our vibration and that can be felt by others. So there is something we can do for others, even when there's so much we can't do. Wow. Victoria writes, something in me is tired to check myself all the time. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, who's feeling just really sick of all the extra stuff we have to do to take care of ourselves? <laughs> Let's say hello to that. Uh, and, the, and, the, and that part of us that has the impulse to stop. Do I really have to put on my mask every time? And let's say hello to that. Well, would it be nice if world leaders could say hello to their impulses more? <laughs> but we can do it. Ah, oh, lovely. Lovely to be with you, my dears. Yeah, so we're acknowledging what we're enjoying and what we're worried about. Seems like that's a lot of what we've been doing today. So remember to use something in me for stressful feelings like worry, tension, sadness. Sadness is sort of in the middle. Sadness can be a very connecting thing to feel. But if you're feeling anxious and scared, you can say something in me feels. Not to push it away, but so that it has company. And the feelings of enjoying, mm, just really savor those. Wow. Well, it's been lovely to be with you today. People from really all over the world are here today. And uh, thank you so much. We'll do this every week as long as it lasts. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye.